Today I will show you how to create a human robot effect in Photoshop. So, let's start. Hey guys, it's Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another really fun episode. Today I will show you the basic methods and techniques how to create this kind of human robot effect in Photoshop and then it's up to you to use your own imagination and create your own version. So without further ado, let's jump straight into Photoshop and let's the fun begin. Right guys, today we will use this image to create our own version of a human robot effect. And first thing that I like to do when I'm uh, doing this kind of effect is to draw a line so where the holes will be in a human body. So I have already this lines layer uh, prepared here because I don't want to draw all those lines again because it will take a lot more time than it's needed. But I will show you how I did this on a few lines and you can do your own lines, your own style. It doesn't need to be uh, like this exactly. You can uh, release your imagination and do whatever you want. So basically, first thing what I like to do when I want to create those lines is to create a new empty layer and use a brush. I will use a black brush, 100% opacity, like so, hardness, actually opacity, 100% uh, and hardness, 100%, all right? And I will make it smaller just to draw some lines like so. And then I will start, uh, sorry, start to sketch something like this, right? Then maybe like so, like so. Here will be a hole, so right here will be something like this. And I can just copy that on the other side. Then I can maybe make a new line here and here and so on and so on on the body and everything else. So I just made this as a sketch. And then I use a pen tool to create really nice and precise lines. If you're not familiar with the pen tool, please watch my tutorial about the pen tool right here and you will master this tool. It's really important to know the, uh, how to use the pen tool, right? And now I create a new layer where uh, the lines will be. I will call it again lines, right? And this layer is just for sketch. I will lower the opacity to maybe 30 or so percent. And then I will go to a lines layer and I will start with the pen tool. I will create a path so it will go like so maybe. And then from here like so. Okay, and quickly create really nice path for our line. And then how to add a line uh, to follow this path. You have everything that covered in my um, pen tool tutorial. So I will quickly show you, just go to brush tool, choose the size of the brush, maybe like this. Yes, that's really nice. I will just hide this layer where the sketch is and choose the size of the brush and then go again uh, to pen tool, right click and go stroke path. All right. And I will click this simulate pen pressure option to simulate the pen pressure. So I will delete the pad and I have really nice and precise line. If I didn't uh, check the simulate pre pen pressure option, I will have the same thickness along this line. And I don't want that. I really want to simulate the pen pressure, but to have that as an option, you need to go to pen uh, to brush properties, go to shape dynamics and just in a size jitter, go navigate to brand pressure. If you have this uh, warning sign in a triangle, don't worry, it's uh, normal and uh, it will still works, all right? Then right click, stroke pad, simulate pen pressure and you have really, really nice line. And that's how I draw all those lines. Let's delete this and this. That's how I draw all those lines across the human body one by one. Those circles are just regular brush and click like so. And this big circle is the same. So now that we have done with those lines, let's go and create our next step, right? The next step will be to go to fill option and move it all the way to the zero. So we don't have our lines visible, but they are still here. We just don't have those uh, surfaces filled with the color. I will now double click on this layer. Okay, to load this layer style properties and I will go to uh, bevel and emboss, all right? Click on that and I really, I already have some nice figure here. And here where the shading option is, I can choose the light direction. So I want my light to go where this uh, lights in the studio were in the front and 
above her. So something like this direction, All right? And then when I'm done with that, I will go and drop shadow. Just let me show you if I erase this. I just want this drop shadow to have a contour option around it. Uh, so the distance is zero. If it's not, it will be something like this. I like distance to keep at zero and the size, just a small size, maybe something around six or seven or five pixels, depend of the image size. So maybe five or so, five, all right? And then the last step is to go to inner shadow, all right? And let's zoom this a little bit, all right? Let's go back to the effects. Let's zoom this and go to the inner shadow. And again, we can choose uh, the shadow position, distance from the surface, all right? The size of the shadow it will be softer or softer or harder and choke and just play with that until you're satisfied with the result. So I will go right here again and move these lights all the way up. So I will have something like this effect. And I really like it maybe the size of this, I can change the size, let me see. Just play with that and find the best size that works for you. Six or maybe, let's leave it to six. Inner shadow, let me see. Distance will be a little bit bigger, like so, so that we have impression that the hole is deeper. And uh, this shadow, it's okay to five. Yeah. Let's leave it to five or even four, yeah, like this. And I will press OK. And there we have really, really nice effect that our model has some holes in her face and her body. And that's what I want to achieve. So I now want to uh, copy this effect and to make actual holes on this background layer. So to do that, just need to unlock it. To do that, just go to lines layer, control or command, click on that. So to load this as a selection and then go here and press and hold alt or option key and load the mask like so. so. So now we have real holes here in this layer. If we turned off the lines, we will just have those holes. If we turn on the lines, we will have that um, effect that these, those are really the holes with the shadows and everything highlights around here and so on and so on. Right, the next step is to load some elements that will be inside the human robot body. So let's do that. For that, I will use this gear uh, image, right? I will just copy this, copy this, and I will just go here and paste it like so. And I will put it below the body effect, uh, body layer. This is body, and this is gear. I will put this gear layer in a group. You will see later why and I will name the gear, right? And now I will move it and see how this affects the image. It's obviously too big for my taste, so I will go Control Command T and make it smaller, right? And now I can reposition and play with this, maybe even smaller, like so. Let me see how this looks to find the right. This looks really nice, maybe even smaller have those gears visible like so and I really like it I can press enter and then I will go to this gear layer press alt or option key and just move it with the move tool to duplicate it like so and I will move it and then I will reposition it somewhere here again doesn't need to be the same but something like this it's nice so I will just copy here like so then by holding out or option key, just drag here, maybe rotate it to find better portion. And I need to copy it right here. That's nice. So now let's go and move it on the shoulders. I love how this gears gear looks here. Right, then move another one right here and maybe another one right, right here. So we can populate this scene with you can use, of course, a lot of uh, different elements, different images, but for this tutorial, I will ju use just this one uh, for uh, example, and then position it something like so. But you can play really, you have uh, countless possibilities for that. So let me see, I think everything is now populated, except this hole here, but 
I will put something else in the hole. So let's for now leave this like so. All right. And now I will go and click the first layer in a group and then the last layer in the group and press Ctrl or Command D to merge everything together into one layer because I actually don't need all of these layers. So this looks like this. All right. It's the same, exactly the same image, just distributed in a lot of different places here. So we have really nice effect that we have some gears and things inside her body. So the next step is to load the eyes. I like the eyes to be like this lens and I will just use this, uh, as you can see here, elliptical marquee tool and just press and hold shift to make uh, the press and hold shift and drag to make this perfect circle. And by pressing and holding space bar, I can move this selection and then release the space bar and try to nudge it to select everything inside here like so. Then I will press Ctrl or Command C and go back to our image and paste it uh, here maybe. Let me see. No, all the way up like so. And this will be our eye, right? Something like this, make it smaller. So we'll lower the opacity around 50% to see what I'm doing and to get the right size out of this. Okay, something like this, maybe a little bit smaller. We can use arrows to nudge it left and right, up and down, maybe a little bit here. And that's it. Right now I can increase opacity and maybe move it a little bit like so. And I can duplicate it by Control Command J and just move it right here to our next eye and those reflections here i want to rotate them to be on on this portion here where the original reflections are so i will go just press ctrl command t and rotate a little bit like so and this side same something like this all right that's not bad so i will merge both of those eyes into one layer again by selecting both of them and press Control command e to merge them and i will name this eyes okay and put a mask on it so i can mask this part that it's uh, that doesn't need uh, to be visible like so okay and i will mask this part right here Maybe I'll lose a softer brush, something like this. And let me see here, I will just again use the same thing with a softer brush, like so, and go to the next eye, mask this out and mask this, like so right and we have really nice crazy robot eyes so i will again paste the same lens here in the scene and i will make it smaller to fit this hole in the forehead all right make it smaller make it smaller something like this it will be here and then make it bigger just find the right size like this let me see and this looks really nice. So I will rotate it again on the left side like so. And let's, let's zoom and see. This looks really, really nice. All right, guys, we are just done with our basic shape, basic look of this robot. So now I will play with some colors and the final color correction. Uh, don't forget that you can add a lot of different elements here. You can add some wires that will go out of the body. You can make bigger holes, different shapes, and so on and so on. You now know the techniques and the methods. So uh, play, play with that and create your own version of this robot. Right, let's go back and play with some colors. Right now I will go and rename this to third eye. Right, and I will group all those three layers into eyes group, all right? And use hue and saturation adjustment layer. I will clip to affect only eyes layer and use the colorize option. I will colorize this something like 
bluish tint to have bluish tint like so maybe you can use maybe red or anything that you want you can play with your own look right but i will do something like like so and then i want to go and make this uh, this robot a little bit brighter and a little bit desaturated and i want to make her skill a little skill skin a little bit smoother so i will group everything together shift ctrl alt e or shift command option e on a mac i will go to filter and camera roll filter and i will just use this clarity slider to move it a little bit to the left like so and press ok just to make the skin smoother a little bit and i, I will add a mask here of course you can smooth the skin on countless different ways but i like this method for this purpose all right and i will just go here and add that smoothness basically everywhere on the skin but not on the background and i will remove from the uh, from the eyes and the lips right something like this and now let's go and remove with the black brush on the mask with from the lips maybe from these parts here and of course i will remove it from the nose eyes i want eyes to be really sharp with the details and from the eyebrows maybe ears too like so and now let me see this is before and after before and after i really like it i want to remove it from the third eye and that's that's it maybe 30 percent of bestian remove from those parts too okay now i will go and create a new adjustment layer curves and i will make her a little bit brighter like like so right but i will invert the mask with control or command i and then i will go here and use a quick selection tool like so and i will just select her skin and maybe a little bit of the hair i'll fix that right just select her skin like so and go here press and hold alt option key to remove unwanted parts like this and this does need to be so perfect because we will play and refine this selection later let's press q just to see what i selected all right that's great and i will go here and press because my uh background color it's white i will press ctrl or command key with the backspace to load this as a selection now i need to refine this selection a little bit i will go to the mask i will use a brush really soft one and i will use this maybe 30 percent opacity black brush and just remove and refine this a little bit to have better transition between those darks and bright spots all right let me see this is really nice so i will remove this 50 percent opacity and remove from the eyebrows from the eyes like so and from lips a little bit and that's it let me see not bad let's remove a little bit more from here and that's nice now i will go and create a new adjustment layer here in saturation copy this same mask by holding alt or option key on the hue and saturation adjustment layer and just go and desaturate her a little bit like so but then i will go here and with maybe 30 or so percent opacity and the white let me see yeah and the black brush sorry i will just paint back some color here around the nose because i like it you do don't need to do that but I really like to eyes and things like nose, lips have some color in it. In this case, this reddish tint. And here, just like so. I really like how this looks. You maybe want some art things, so leave it as you want. So this is nice. Maybe I'll go back to curves and lower the brightness a little bit like so. And let me see before and after before and after maybe you find this a little bit better but uh, for me for the final effect that you will see in a few moments i like this kind of effect on her face so i'll just want to go here and try to 
correct this part here, right? Just make this one right, like so, and more desaturated, right? And take your time with, with this kind of stuff. Just pay attention to the details, okay? And that's it. Now we will play with the final color correction and some other things and we will finalize the image. So let's do it. Uh, first, what I like to do is again to merge everything together into one new layer and the shortcut is shift control alt e or shift command option e on a Mac, like so. And then I will go to filter and of course camera row. And here in the camera row filter, I like to go first to split toning and to tone the shadows a little to a bluish tint, something like this. I really like how this looks. But now I want to tone the highlights, basically the skin, to some greenish or something like so we will see. Maybe this is too much, just a touch. Something like, like, like this. Of course you can tone anything you want. It's This is just a personal preference and a taste. I will tone it into something like this. Then I will go to the FX tab and go to the haze, the haze it a little bit, then add some vignette because I like it, like so. Then go to the main tab and add some contrast, maybe brighten the touch, like so. Maybe like this. All right, let's go to 10. What's the problem? Okay, and open the shadows a little bit. Add some blacks, add some clarity, maybe just a touch of uh, vibrance. And let me see before and after, before and after, really, really nice. Maybe go here to blue color, saturation, and just desaturate the blues just a little bit. And I will press OK. And this is really nice. Let me show before and after, really nice effect. Now the next step is to go to a filter, Nick Color FX Pro. And I will use just a dynamic contrast option for this and nothing else. It's in the pro contrast tab here. I will use this dynamic contrast. All right, I will boost this and maybe this color um, to correct the color cast. So maybe a little bit, let me see something like this. And that's it. Of course you can, this is just the final color correction of the image and you can uh, do it as ever you want. So play with that, be creative, create some other feel and look of this. So now I will duplicate this with Control Command J, go again to camera row and just go to a blue color. I will desaturate the blue a little bit like so on the background. And I will put a mask on those eyes because I want eyes saturated. And let me see, press OK. And with the mask, on and the black brush 100% opacity i will just paint back some color here and then i can go and use any kind of circuit diagram for this i will i just downloaded this i don't i don't know if it's uh it's free to use so i will not uh, give you uh in in uh, other files but you can download everything anything that you want and you can create something like this put it at the top put this into multiply blending mode like so and then you can just put a mask on it and remove from, from the body here, right? And then you will have really nice and interesting background. And I will show you one other trick that I like to use here, something like this. And I like to blur this background because it will give me a better feel of the depth. Blur this a little bit, like nine, it's okay. And I will, just first merge everything together here to have a copy of this layer and I will blur this layer too. So I will go to blur, Gaussian blur and blur it with the same amount of blur, maybe a little bit less, but never mind. and put a mask on it. So I will create a fake depth of field, right? Something like this. Then with 50% opacity brush, just paint a little bit more around her and on the body here. And then maybe with 20 or 30% opacity brush, just paint here, or maybe add back some blurriness and so on. So you can have fun with this fake, you have to feel like so, all right? And when we are done with this, I will merge again, everything together into one layer, and I will go to filter other high pass 
and just find the right, right amount to make this sharper. If you don't, if you're not familiar how to sharp your images, you can find again my tutorial about the sharpening right here. So I will use something like like one, and then I will put this into linear light. And of course, this is really sharp, but I will put a mask on it and just sharp the eyes, right? The eyebrows, lips a little bit here on the nose and those gears here, why not? Right, maybe this third eye too. So basically guys, this is it. I like to crop this into a square format, but you can crop it as ever you want. And we have our final version of this human robot effect. And that's it guys. I really hope that you like this tutorial and that you learned something new out of it. You just saw how you can create this kind of human robot effect and you can use the same methods and techniques to apply on a full body portion of a human body to create really nice uh, full body human robot effect and you can be really creative with this just release your imagination and create something completely different using these same methods and techniques so guys if you have any questions regarding to this episode please leave them in the comments below i will be glad to answer them if you want to support me on this channel, you can do that by visiting my Patreon page. The link is down there in the description. And thank you so much for watching this channel. See you guys in the next fun episode. Bye-bye.